definitely say the first motivation or like the main inspiration um, was more or less a breaking point. Um, so during the revolution 2011 I was studying medicine um, and I was on my journey to become a doctor. Um, and then when the war started I volunteered at Tripoli Central Hospital. Um, and at that time I just realized that for us we thought that the revolution and basically change can take a short time. Um, it's very practical, you just get rid of a dictatorship, a regime, and then that's it. Um, and then when I was working at the hospital, I realized that the work or the journey for change for Libya has just started. Um, and it was a waking up call for me to see that um, that the society, in particular the Libyan society, will need to undertake a process of reconciliation and rehabilitation from all the violence that it went to. Um, therefore, me and my colleagues, we co-founded the Together We Build It organization. And as you can assume from its name, um, basically we work and call for all actors in Libya, everyone to contribute together in rebuilding the society and bringing, uh, bringing peace back to the country. But of course, um, the practical work includes so many things within promoting peace in Libya, for an example, um, empowering women's political participation, uh, women's economic empowerment, um, also youth political participation and youth participation in peace building. Um, very practically, it's about building up capacity of women and youth, um, empowering and encouraging local communities um, to participate and play an active role in peace building. Um, we also create platforms where we can make a link between local communities and national decision makers. Um, so it goes from bottom up, but also from top down, as in terms of, again, creating these channels um, where local communities can uh, deliver their messages, thoughts, um, but also feelings about what's going on in the country to our national decision makers. Of course, the political situation in Libya can be very... Um, it can complicate our work, um, but I must also admit that despite that there is different political actors uh, that can exist in one city to that extent, um, the different political actors are willing to listen. Um, but then also from our side, um, as an organization and from the work we do, we are politically neutral. Um, so we call for dialogue, we call for debate, um, and we have been always inclusive as in terms of we want all actors in the community in Libya, whether it was state actors, non-state actors, that of course include civil society, local communities, and basically we work with all different groups. Um, and again, what we call for is, is peace and dialogue. The first thing and the most important thing is that young people all over the world need to get political. Um, we see that many young people would say we don't care about politics, we don't do politics, we don't want to get into politics. Um, some refuse the idea 100% and others will say, well, I'm a young person, I want to live my life and maybe when I grow up I will, I will start thinking whether I would want to engage in politics. I think what they don't know and it's very important for them to realize that politics affects them even before they are born. Um, politics is not always about state politics, it's not always about foreign affairs. Um, politics is about people's life. Um, and in some places it can get to an extent to what you can wear, what you can eat and what you can behave. Um, and therefore um, we see young people being very radical and, and I mean many young people say we are independent and we want to do whatever we want in our lives. Um, and they always focus on the closer relationships to them but they don't think that their relationship with the state and their relationship with politics actually affects um, affects their personal life and it imposes limits. Um, it also it can be something positive, but it can also be something negative. Whether it puts limits on what they can do, but states can and politics can also offer opportunities for for youth to develop and, and basically live the life that they want to live. When we talk about women, um, we're talking about perspectives. Um, um, usually in our work, because I work a lot with women's empowerment inside of Libya, and 
usually people would assume that whenever I say gender and whenever I say, well, I want to see women in, in the ministry or I want to see a prime minister that is women, they often think that, well, it's, it's just about promoting for this type of gender or this form of gender. But for us, we always say it's about perspective. Um, if we have an affected community, if we have a matter that we want to solve, um, then the perfect and the ideal solution would be asking and seeking and taking the opinions um, of the different groups within the society. Um, and women, whether inside of Libya, outside of Libya, um, we can, I think, um, in, in confident that at least inside of Libya, I would say they form at least 50% of the society. So if we're talking about solutions that will affect the whole community, then we need, we need this 50% perspective to be included. Mm -hmm.